connections between the different systems found on the Saab models. Be sure to complete the self-study workbook and test to receive credit for this training. Saab began using an enhanced evaporative control or EVAP system on some 1996 models to comply with OBD2 requirements. With the 1998 model year, 40% of all vehicles must also have an onboard refueling vapor recovery ORVR system as well. This will be accomplished by using ORVR on all 900 models. While the EVAP system captures evaporative emissions from the vehicle's fuel tank, the purpose of the ORVR system is to recover all hydrocarbons during refueling in order to prevent their release into the atmosphere. We'll begin by reviewing the familiar enhanced EVAP system. The enhanced EVAP system is similar to the evaporative emission control system seen on Saab models for years. The system is designed to capture fuel tank vapors in an activated charcoal canister and release them at appropriate times to the intake manifold for combustion. Flow is pulse width modulated controlled and occurs when the engine is in closed loop operation, coolant temperature is above 60 degrees Celsius, and manifold pressure is below 90 kilopascals. The fuel tank is required to hold gasoline for the vehicle. However, the tank also holds vapors created by the volatile gasoline in the unfilled portion of the tank. To trap these vapors in the tank, a special filler cap is used. Additionally, the cap has a special relief valve to prevent the fuel tank from collapsing due to excess vacuum caused by an enhanced EVAP system failure. The fuel tank pressure sensor is required for enhanced diagnostics. On 1996 and 1997 900 models, it is mounted at the lower end of the filler neck and measures the differential between tank pressure and barometric pressure. The engine control module, ECM, supplies the sensor with a 5 volt power supply. The sensor output voltage varies with tank pressure. When the fuel tank is at atmospheric pressure, the sensor output voltage is typically 2.5 volts. As mentioned moments ago, the pressure sensor is used for OBD2 diagnostics. On 1998-900 models, the evaporative canister has been moved. It is now found under the vehicle behind the fuel tank. The evaporative canister is similar to those found on previous models. As before, the canister stores fuel vapors and supplies them to the engine for combustion. The canister close valve on 1998-900 models is now located inside the passenger side rear wheel well and is connected to the canister's air supply. The valve is controlled by a ground circuit through the ECM. The valve is open when not grounded by the ECM. When current is supplied, the valve closes. The canister close valve is energized only during a tank integrity check that is part of OBD2 enhanced EVAP diagnostics. The canister purge valve is positioned between the canister and intake manifold. It is a solenoid which meters the quantity of air and hydrocarbons allowed to enter the intake manifold for combustion. The new ORVR system builds upon this enhanced EVAP system you've seen for the last two model years. The onboard refueling vapor recovery, or ORVR system, must limit escaping hydrocarbons to 0.2 grams or less during refueling and be able to detect a system leak equal to a hole of one millimeter in diameter. In order to accomplish this, the system consists of a fuel tank, fuel tank pressure sensor, rollover shutoff valve, float valve, evaporative canister, fuel tank non-return valve, canister close valve, filler pipe, and canister purge valve. Before we look at the new ORVR components, note that the plastic weld fuel tank and all its related components, except the pressure sensor and fuel pump, are not serviceable individually. This also includes the plastic lines. If replacement is necessary, an entire new tank assembly is required. For ORVR, the fuel tank pressure sensor is moved to a mounting on the tank instead of the filler neck. With the ORVR system, 
The rollover shutoff valve now has a port to vent the air pressure created in the tank during a fill-up. This air passes through the valve and is carried to the canister. The float valve also connects to the canister. When the tank is almost full, the spring-loaded float closes and liquid fuel is prevented from entering the canister. The float valve also closes in the event of a rollover. Positioned behind the fuel tank, the canister typically stores 80 to 90 grams of hydrocarbons during a refueling and has a maximum capacity of 150 grams. The fuel tank non-return valve is positioned where the filler tube mates to the fuel tank. The non-return valve ensures that fuel vapor cannot travel up the filler tube and limits fuel spitback during a fill-up. Obviously, with this design, gasoline siphoning is not possible. The fuel filler pipe incorporates an insert to not only ensure the fuel pump nozzle is centered in the pipe, but also draw in ambient air during fueling. The 25 millimeter diameter pipe increases the velocity of the fuel when filling. This helps ensure that all fuel vapors will be drawn into the tank. System operation involves both refueling and diagnostic routines for OBD2. During a fill-up, fuel passes through the filler pipe, past the non-return valve, and into the tank. The entering fuel pressurizes the air and hydrocarbons in the tank, causing them to pass through the float valve onto the canister. The non-return valve prevents any vapors from passing up the filler pipe. At the canister, the hydrocarbons are absorbed by the canister and the air escapes out the canister close valve. As the tank fills to a level of about 95%, the float valve closes. Pressure in the tank increases and the non-return valve also closes. Fuel rises in the filler pipe slightly and the fuel pump nozzle shuts off, as one would expect. The remaining vapor in the tank slowly passes through the rollover valve and onto the canister. As this vapor goes to the canister, the fuel runs down the filler pipe into the tank. After engine startup, the canister is purged as air is sucked in through the canister close valve. The hydrocarbon air mixture passes through the purge valve onto the intake manifold's throttle body for combustion. For OBD2 diagnostics, the system checks to see if a vacuum can be achieved and maintained in the EVAP system. Two consecutive tests must fail for a diagnostic trouble code, DTC, to be set by the ECM. The OBD2 diagnostic check is performed by the ECM during the drive cycle under very exact operating conditions called the enable criteria. When the enable criteria are met, the ECM energizes the canister close valve, increases the duty cycle of the EVAP purge valve, and looks for a small pressure drop or vacuum as monitored by the fuel tank's pressure sensor. If the ECM does not see the small pressure drop within several seconds, the ECM determines there is a large leak and a DTC P0455 is set. If the ECM sees an adequate pressure drop in the first phase, the ECM shuts off the EVAP purge valve but holds the canister close valve closed for several seconds. If during this phase of the test the pressure rises, the ECM determines there is a small leak and a DTC P0442 is set. A hose is teed between the rollover and float valves and connected to the upper filler pipe. This hose allows detection of an unsecured fuel cap. Because ORVR requires additional components, conventional leak testing methods are ineffective. For the 1998 model year, Saab is launching a new piece of equipment, the Pressure Purge Diagnostic Station number J41413. This test station can be used on 1998 models to help locate leaks in the ORVR system. Furthermore, it can also be used on earlier models to help locate leaks on any EVAP system. While mid-year 1998-900 models will have a factory-installed service port for connecting to the station, the earlier 1998 models can have a service port installed for test station hookup as part of diagnosis. For pre-1998 models, a gas cap adapter is available or a service port can be installed. If a leak is suspected, 
This ultrasonic leak detector is used to sniff out the leak area. When an EVAP system leak is suspected, use the J41413 testing station to help locate the leak. Turn the control panel knob to the pressure release position and zero the gauges if necessary. Most testing involves use of the EVAP pressure gauge on the left side of the control panel. Perform a self-test of the diagnostic station according to the laminated instruction card that came with the station. Then, with the engine not running, connect the red line from the station to the enhanced EVAP system service port if equipped. Remember, a gas cap adapter is available for pre-1998 models and a service port is available for the early 1998-900 models that were built without one. Now the canister close valve must be energized to close it. On 1998-900 turbo models, use the Tech 2 to activate the canister close valve. 1996 and 1997 models require a jumper harness to energize the canister close valve. The parts necessary to create this jumper harness were thoroughly described in PSI number 01-97-0729 in section 2 on page 61. Turn the control valve to the pressure position for several seconds, then to off hold. Repeat this process until the gauge displays a pressure of 5 inches of water. If the system cannot be pressurized to 5 inches of water, there is a large leak and the ultrasonic leak detector should be used. If the system can be pressurized to 5 inches of water, continue to pressurize the system until 15 inches of water is achieved. With the control knob in the off-hold position, the pressure must not fall below 8 inches of water within 2 minutes. If it does, use the ultrasonic leak detector to find the leak. Be sure to turn the station's control knob to the pressure position so nitrogen is flowing as you check for leaks. Hold down the button on the detector as you carefully check for leaks at operating components and connections. Realize that the ultrasonic leak detector is sensitive to ambient noise in the shop, such as the exhaust extraction equipment and air tools. Be careful not to interpret background noise as an EVAP system leak. The enhanced EVAP testing equipment requires calibration maintenance and correct use. Read all instructions from the manufacturer thoroughly. Furthermore, be sure to read the self-study workbook that accompanies this video presentation. Within the workbook, you'll find a complete listing of all the EVAP system variations found on recent model year Saab vehicles.